Have you ever felt proud of cleaning up your diet? More vegetables, more smoothies, less junk, yet something still feels off? You wake up with swollen ankles, you feel unreasonably tired, or your energy just doesn't bounce back the way it used to. Many people chalk those signals up to getting older, but for a surprising number of adults, those subtle changes are your kidneys asking for help, quietly, persistently, and without drama. Unlike your heart, which can pound when it's under strain, or your lungs, which cough when irritated, the kidneys almost never complain until they're very compromised. You can lose a staggering amount of kidney function with few obvious symptoms. By the time you notice persistent swelling, shortness of breath, or relentless fatigue, significant damage may already be underway. And here's the twist most people don't see coming. It isn't only fast food or sugary drinks that can push vulnerable kidneys over the edge. Sometimes it's the very foods we're told are the epitome of healthy, especially certain vegetables when they're concentrated, overused, or poorly matched to a kidney that's already struggling. I'm Dr. Johnny. In the next few minutes, I'll walk you through vegetables that can quietly overload stressed kidneys and the ones that tend to protect them. The goal isn't fear, it's precision. When you understand how potassium, oxalates, sodium, and other compounds interact with impaired filtration, you can build a plate that nourishes your whole body without pushing your kidneys toward crisis. Let's begin with a familiar friend, tomatoes. A fresh tomato on a salad is rarely a problem for most people, even those with reduced kidney function. The issue is concentration. When tomatoes are transformed into paste, sauce, ketchup, or juice, their minerals, especially potassium, become far more dense per bite. A cup of unsalted tomato sauce can approach the potassium load that would be fine for a healthy kidney but risky for a weakened one. That concentrated dose adds up quickly, especially when healthy homemade sauces rely on multiple spoonfuls of paste. For someone with reduced glomerular filtration, that excess potassium doesn't clear efficiently. The result can be a rise in serum potassium that starts with vague weakness and fatigue, but can progress to dangerous heart rhythm changes. The fix is not to demonize tomatoes. It's to respect concentration and control portion size. Favor diced fresh tomatoes or small amounts of thin sauce, season with the herbs like basil or parsley, and avoid drowning meals in thick paste. Now consider the classic comfort food. Potatoes, mashed, baked, roasted, or fried. They're cultural staples and they feel wholesome, but a single medium baked potato can deliver a very large potassium load and sweet potatoes can be even higher per serving. In a healthy person, the kidney's exquisite regulatory system balances that surge. In someone with chronic kidney disease, long-standing hypertension, diabetes, or age-related decline, potassium can accumulate faster than it's excreted. What begins as a comforting plate can, in the wrong context, become a silent overload. Does that mean potatoes are forbidden? Not necessarily. The technique called leaching, peeling, cutting into small pieces, soaking in water for several hours, then boiling in fresh water, can draw out a meaningful portion of potassium. Portion size still matters. Think modest servings and don't stack multiple potato dishes at the same meal. Rotating toward lower potassium sides, such as a cauliflower mash, further reduces risk while preserving that cozy, satisfying texture you love. Next up is a food often praised for heart health and athletic performance, beets. Their natural nitrates can support vascular function and blood pressure, benefits we value. But beets carry two issues for compromised kidneys, notable potassium content and substantial oxalates. Oxalates are compounds that bind calcium and can crystallize irritating delicate renal tubules. In whole occasional portions, many people tolerate beets just fine. The problem appears when they're juiced, powdered, or consumed daily as detox shots. Concentration turns a friendly food into a stress test, especially for a filtration system already under pressure. If you enjoy beets, keep portions modest, 
avoid daily concentrated juices or powders, and pair them with calcium-containing foods to bind oxalate in the gut before it reaches the kidneys. The same logic applies to many performance concentrates. What's beneficial to the cardiovascular system in moderation can be counterproductive for impaired renal handling when taken in large, frequent, or concentrated doses. Then there's rhubarb, the surprise on this list. Its tart flavor makes it a favorite in jams and desserts, but rhubarb is exceptionally high in oxalates, and concentration through cooking doesn't magically neutralize that burden. It can increase the oxalate density per bite. For individuals with chronic kidney disease, prior kidney stones, or a history of oxalate issues, shows rhubarb is a clear use extreme caution or avoid food. When a kidney is vulnerable, main, even short periods of heavy rhubarb intake can tip the balance, precipitating crystals that block flow and inflame tissue. There are plenty of safer flavor substitutes. Berries, apples, and cranberries offer brightness without the same risk. Swiss chard is another green with a healthy reputation that can be problematic in this specific context. It delivers a one-two punch of high potassium and high oxalates, especially when cooked down or juiced. Boiling can reduce some soluble oxalate, but potassium remains comparatively concentrated, and juicing magnifies both. If your kidney function is reduced, treat Swiss chard as an occasional garnish rather than a daily staple, and consider rotating to gentler greens. Which brings us to spinach, a global superfood that's easy to overdo. Spinach is nutrient-dense, but it's also among the highest common vegetables and oxalates. A small, raw handful in a salad isn't the same as a large smoothie packed with the multiple cups. Blending can turn a modest leaf into several cups worth in a single glass, delivering a bolus of oxalate that the kidneys must rush to excrete. Over time, especially in those predisposed to stones or with reduced filtration, that pattern can drive micro-injury, crystals, and pain. Cooking reduces some oxalate, but not enough to make daily large portions safe in vulnerable patients. The practical guidance is diversity and moderation. Rotate greens, don't rely on spinach as a daily primary base, and favor lower oxalate options when making smoothies. Pause here and notice a theme. Concentration, portion size, frequency, and personal kidney status are everything. Whole foods in modest amounts behave differently than powders, juices, and daily megadoses. The same vegetable can be nourishing for one person and risky for another, depending on filtration capacity, comorbidities, and the overall pattern of intake. Now the good news, many vegetables are not just safe. They actively support kidney health by reducing inflammatory load, supplying fiber, and avoiding excesses of potassium, phosphorus, sodium, and oxalates. One of the most versatile is cauliflower. It's naturally low in potassium and phosphorus per cooked cup and offers fiber, hydration, and beneficial phytochemicals such as glucosinolates and sulforaphane precursors. Those compounds help the body upregulate antioxidant and detoxification pathways that protect fragile renal tissue from oxidative stress. Cauliflower can replace higher potassium sides without sacrificing comfort. Roast it, steam it, pulse it into rice, or mash it with a touch of olive oil and garlic for a smooth, satisfying swap. Add color and antioxidants with red bell peppers. They're relatively low in potassium compared to many other vegetables yet rich in vitamin C, beta carotene, and flavonoids that counteract oxidative stress. Because cardiovascular disease and kidney disease often travel together, foods that support vascular integrity and reduce inflammation are especially valuable. Red peppers can stand in for tomato products in many recipes, bringing sweetness and depth without the concentrated potassium of paste and sauce. Saute them, roast them, toss them into soups. Your palate and your kidneys both win. Garlic deserves a special mention. When crushed and allowed to rest briefly, it releases allicin, an organosulfur compound associated with modest blood pressure reductions, antioxidant effects, and anti-inflammatory activity. For people trying to cut sodium without sacrificing flavor, 
Garlic offers a powerful tool. By improving endothelial function and dialing down oxidative stress, it indirectly eases the burden on the kidney's microvasculature. A simple practice, crush fresh cloves, let them sit for about 10 minutes to activate and add near the end of cooking, maximizes benefits and taste. Cabbage, like cauliflower, belongs to the crucifer family and is often overlooked. It's inexpensive, low in potassium and oxalates, and high in fiber. Importantly, crucifers stimulate the NRF2 pathway, a master switch that turns on genes involved in your body's own antioxidant and detoxification systems. Rather than detoxing you from the outside, cabbage helps your cells protect and repair themselves. Lightly steam it, add to soups, saute with garlic and olive oil, or enjoy it raw in finely shredded salads. Each method is gentle on kidneys while supporting gut health another route for waste elimination that takes pressure off renal excretion. Notice what ties these protective choices together. They deliver flavor and phytonutrients without hammering compromised kidneys with concentrated potassium, phosphorus, sodium, or oxalates. They also make it easier to reduce reliance on salt, which is central to blood pressure control and fluid balance. Two pillars of kidney preservation. At this point, it's worth busting the biggest myth in the wellness world, the detox craze. Your kidneys and liver already are the detox system. They don't need a cleanse, they need relief. Daily mega smoothies packed with high oxalate greens, powders touted as supercharged, and aggressive frequent juicing regimens often create the very electrolyte in crystal burdens. Vulnerable kidneys can't handle. Healing is rarely about extremes. It's about steady, smart choices that reduce the workload on a delicate filtration network while keeping the rest of you well-nourished. So how do you translate all of this into a week of eating that protects your kidneys without sacrificing joy? Start by auditing concentration. If you love tomato flavor, lean on diced tomatoes and red peppers instead of spoonfuls of paste or thick sauce. If potatoes are a comfort, Reserve them for small, leached portions and avoid stacking them across a meal. Use cauliflower mash or roasted cauliflower steaks as regular stand-ins. If smoothies are part of your routine, rotate low oxalate bases such as cucumber, zucchini, or lettuce, and use small amounts of other greens rather than large daily boluses of spinach or Swiss chard. Skip beet juices and powders if your filtration is reduced. If you do enjoy beets, Keep portions modest, infrequent, and paired with calcium-containing foods. Avoid rhubarb if you've had stones or any renal impairment. Build flavor with garlic, herbs, citrus, and spices, not salt. Next, focus on pattern and portion. Many people with early kidney decline do well when they distribute potassium intake evenly and avoid large single-meal spikes. That means smaller servings, more variety, and spacing higher potassium foods across days rather than concentrating them. Hydrate sensibly according to your clinician's guidance. Both dehydration and excess fluid can be problematic, depending on your stage of disease and medications. Finally, personalize. Lab values matter. If your EGFR is declining, if you've had kidney stones, if your potassium is creeping up, if you're on ACE inhibitors, ARBs, or potassium-sparing diuretics, your margin is narrower and diet needs to be tailored. Work with your healthcare team and, when possible, a renal dietitian to fine-tune potassium, phosphorus, sodium, and protein targets for your situation. The goal is not to strip away nutrition, but to choose foods that deliver it without tripwires. If all of this feels like a lot, take a breath. You don't need perfection, you need progress. Swap one risky pattern for a safer one. Trade thick tomato paste for roasted red peppers. Replace a mound of mashed potatoes with creamy cauliflower once or twice a week. Use crushed garlic to cut the salt shaker. Rotate your greens and and step back from daily concentrated juices and powders. Each small consistent change tells your kidneys, I hear you. And over weeks to months, those choices often translate into quieter swelling, 
steadier energy, more comfortable sleep, and lab numbers that move in the right direction. Before your next meal, glance at your plate and ask a simple question. Is this going to help my kidneys or make them work harder? When you make that decision with awareness, day after day, you give your kidneys the best chance to serve you well for years to come. They may be quiet, but they are listening. Treat them kindly, and they'll return the favor with the most precious gift in medicine. Steady, uneventful, dependable health. I'm Dr. Johnny. Thank you for caring about your body. If kidney protection is a priority for you, stay curious, keep learning, and partner with your clinician to personalize these principles to your labs and medications. In our next session, we'll look at morning habits that either lighten the kidney's load or unknowingly add to it.